Hello and welcome to Going Medieval Early Access. I'm Shadow Coast and welcome to the channel. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to outline how to play this game, reviewing basic commands and providing you advice on how to start your first journey so you can learn this game and not be super confused. Let's get started. We're going to start a new game. I recommend picking standard and normal difficulty or easier for your first experience. I also recommend picking a new life. You have some resources and three settlers. So let's get started. You can pick a location. We're going to go with Valley. It's up to you. And then you can take a minute to kind of look at your different people. If you don't like them, you can randomize them. And that's going to keep changing it. So feel free to do that. We're not going to worry about it too much. So let's get started. So this game on its offset or on the onset might seem to be very complicated, but they have done a fantastic job making it fairly intuitive once you have an idea of what you're doing. So on this screen, you can take a minute and pause the video to see. WASD rotates the camera and moves you around the screen, right? And then you can use the arrow keys to move your camera around. You can pan and do a bunch of other stuff. World layers, there is a verticality. You can build multiple stories. Right? And that's super important. So X and Z kind of tease you up and down so you can kind of see what you're building and make it easier to kind of select what you're building, which is super nice. Game speed. One, two, three increases the, the speed of the game and spacebar will pause. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is pause. You see these hands with the X's? These mean that items are forbidden. Forbidden items cannot be used by your settlers. So we're going to want them to use our starting items. I don't know why they default this to this, but they do. So hold down shift and then select everything and then click insert. Now, if you click on an individual item, you're going to be able to toggle forbidden on and off by clicking insert. Holding shift and then selecting the screen just lets you select an area. So if I want to select all this stuff over here, which is just resources out in the world, I click insert, um, I can unforbidden it so they can collect it. So that's the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just make sure you can use all the starting resources. The second thing you're gonna wanna do is create a stockpile zone. This is where they're gonna put things or move things. One of the key things here is whenever you're clicking on anything, on the right, you can select variants. So we can have a dumping site. So if we wanna dump waste, we can just put it over here. Uh, we have a warfare stockpile. This just kind of stacks the warfare f f fair gear. So when we are attacked, we can quickly grab it. So you're going to want to do that. Okay. Before we get into things I'm going to recommend to do, you do, I want to orient you to the user interface. On the left here, we have all our people. By hovering over them, you can see their traits and skills. And you can click on them to see how they're doing. If you click tab, tab is going to cycle you through all of your settlers pretty quickly. If you're just if you want to do it that way. If we go up, this here allows you to kind of view different things. So for example, you can go down layers. So we're going to go down into the ground here in a second. Right? So now we're underground. Um, you can use uh, Z and X to do that. Uh, depending and it's kind of like every half so I normally like to keep it on six to make it easier over here you can hide roof elements so if you don't want to have to look at roofing so you can see what you're doing inside toggle this on and off treetops can also be toggled on and off so you can see better here you can show overlay of rooms detected this comes into play a little bit different uh, but effectively, what all you're doing here is you're helping see what different things are in a room. So you can kind of figure out how you're building it out, which is nice. You can show color grids of the zones of what you're doing. You can show item indicators on what they are. If they're, you know, um, here, these are kind of different weapons, right? And then we can reset our camera view. Above that, you can tee up jobs, so you can kind of see this, and you can prioritize what each person does. Now, when you get good at the game, 
you're going to want to prioritize things based on their ability. So in this case, if I look here, culinary 12, 12, uh, marksman 18. So this person's an excellent marksman. I am going to prioritize hunting for them, uh, which is great. So you can tinker with this at the beginning. It doesn't matter as much, but just want to highlight it. This is super useful. Next, you can schedule when people work, when people sleep. This is super important that you balance it because you want to keep your people happy or they will leave or in some cases die if they don't get what they need. So you're going to want to check this out. You can kind of click it, prioritize what time they're sleeping, leisuring, etc. Sleeping's kind of defaulted, but this is super helpful, especially if you're in a crunch period and you need them to work more. You can basically make them sleep very little, but they will get tired. Next is manage. So manage basically determines what they have access to and, and their default stance. So here, I'm going to say all weapons. I recommend you set all weapons for now. It's your choice on this other stuff. But the reason you want to set all weapons is because if you are hunting, they're going to need to be able to pick up the bow. So you could also click range. When you click draft, this effectively allows you to control your characters. Uh, so right now, um, they're going to be kind of going, building, etc. But when you're under attack, you draft them. They're going to automatically pick up weapons based on what you've set up here. So if you said no armor and no weapons, they're not going to pick up any armor or any weapons. So that's why I like to kind of activate them for all. That would be my recommendation. So they just kind of pick it up. Later on, when you have more settlers, they're going to be ones that you want to fight and ones that you do not want to fight. So you just drop the ones you want to fight and then the ones you don't, you don't worry about. We'll get to research in a minute. And then region allows us to kind of see what's going on here, where we're going to see friendly settlements, enemy settlements, have an idea uh, of where we're going to be raided and where we're going to want to go later on. Over here, this is the speed of the game. You can see the date, um, other stuff. This is just like the history. I'm not going to worry about it. Down here, you're going to see different panes based off what you select. And then here, you're going to see your kind of quick guide to do different things. Uh, so we'll run through this. Chop is H. Cut is J, deconstructs K, cancels L, allow is, uh, I guess, period. You can toggle this with insert. Hunt is M, mine is N, harvest is B. Okay. In the bottom left, you can use F1 through 7 to build different things. The first one's base, so this is building structures. Second one is production, allows you to produce stuff. The first thing you're going to want to do here is build a research table. So we're going to prioritize that and have them build the research table. You're also going to want to build a campfire. I'm not really focusing on positioning. And then if you're planning on hunting, build a butcher table. To rotate objects, like you saw I did there, you can click R or F. That will rotate objects. So we're going to go full speed as they do these things. They're going to tee things up. Now, as I mentioned here, this stuff's forbidden. I click insert, I unforbid it, they can do it. If I click on the tree, and sometimes the trees are easier to select when you can see their tops. If you click a, uh, H, which is chopped, they're gonna chop down this tree for resources. When you click on the tree, you can see the amount of resources they're projected to provide you, which is nice. Over here, if we click B, we can harvest items. If we click J, we cut them down. So you click J to clear off space. Research. Research is super important. Research allows us to unlock additional things to build. Excuse me, I just got there. So in the research tree, you can pause this. If you click on architecture, you have to unlock this first. So what happens is we have Chronicles available, then we can upgrade to textbooks, then theses. We create chronicles by researching it at the table. 
So I just unlocked agriculture, which allows us to build wooden beams, which effectively allows us to build multiple stories. So you can see what different things unlock. Agriculture will allow us to grow different crops. Clay brick making is going to unlock things to allow us to produce stuff, uh, which is important. The strategy for this is up to you. In my opinion, after I, I prioritize preserving food and brewing just because, but then you're going to want to get these down here. So this kind of tree right here is really prerequisite to being able to progress to mid game. Okay, so we built this. Now here's the deal. You want someone researching as much as possible so you can upgrade at least this early tree as quickly as possible. So to do that, you're going to want to pick the person with the highest intellect. So in this case, we have six, we have seven. So if you click on this person, who's also our hunter, if you right click on this, we can not prioritize, excuse me, I missed a step. So when you click on an item, you have to click produce, you have to click the product, and then you can set the number you want. So in this case, we're going to set 101. When I click on Patronilla, I'm going to right click and then click prioritize production so she focuses on building out chronicles so then we can research more stuff. After that, because we are at time, you can toy around with building different things. So for example, I could build around this if I wanted to. I'm not. If I click L, I'm going to deconstruct this stuff. Um, what I recommend doing is you're going to want to build a decent sized house so you can put in flooring. You can put in wooden walls around it. You can add doors. On top of that, once it's built, you're going to want to build sleeping hay spots, wooden tables, etc. Um, you're going to have entertainment like backgammon tables, stuff like that to keep your settlers having fun. So I'm going to end this. We did go over time, but I wanted to outline the very basics of some of the commands, controls, user interface, and how to play. I will be posting a limited playthrough series, so please check that out if you want some more tips and actual action on how to play, and in those we'll also cover some combat. Thank you so much for watching. I am actively trying to grow my channel, so please consider subscribing, and please post comments on things that you want to know how to do in this game. It's a really fun game, a lot to unpack, and a lot that I still have to learn because I've only played this for uh, six to seven hours. Thanks so much for watching. Shadow Coast out.